Welcome back to the channel. Today is one you are not going to want to miss. We're about to go inside one of the biggest biohackers homes in the entire world, Gary Brecca. He's going to give us an inside look on exactly how we can optimize our health, biohack, and live a healthy life. You don't want to miss this. He usually charges people $10,000 for the info we're about to get, but I'm going to bring you with me. Let's go. There you go. What's up, my man? Come on, man. Good seeing you, brother. Holy crap. Yeah. Love you, man. I never get tired of this, man. You upgraded. Yeah, so that's that's fine. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, every morning, man, just it's facing due east, so it's perfect. Oh, that's man. South Beach out there, the cruise ships. Beautiful song. Port of Miami, and we're in time for first light, so. Yeah, you always talk about the first light. What's up with the never missing it? I mean, that is the one thing I'd never, ever miss. Yeah. That and breath work. No matter where I am in the world, it helps you um, get onto a new time zone. It yeah. resets cortisol receptors. It resets your melatonin receptors. So remember, the first 45 minutes of the day, there's no UVA. Mm -hmm. There's no UVB, so no damaging rays from the sun. You get healthy blue light from the sun, not... Not the kind of blue light you get from your screen, but you get really healthy, natural blue light. Mm. And this will do more to reset cortisol and melatonin receptors than anything you do for your sleep-wake cycle. Believe it or not, getting first light will do more for your sleep tonight than it, than it does to wake you up in the morning. Wow, so your night of sleep literally starts from the moment you wake up. No question. I mean, the closer you are tied to the circadian rhythm of the sun, you know, the better your bio rhythm. So you don't have to go to sleep with the sun, but waking with the sun is really important. Perfect. What about the uh, blue light blockers? I'll wear these, uh, you know, all day when I'm on the when I'm on the computer. I'll wear these things all day. Oh, even during the day. Just when I'm on the computer, because okay. you get a lot of blue light from computer screens, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what I uh, watch out for. So if I'm in front of the computer a lot, and then at night I wear them after about six o'clock at night. Okay. All Perfect. the way until I go to bed. I always wake up. The first thing I do is hydrate. You know, okay. we're we're usually so dehydrated in the mornings yeah. that we actually have lost the sensation for thirst. Ten ounces of water will restart that. You know, the body's really kind of interesting because it, sometimes it signals the exact opposite of what it wants. So when you're clinically dehydrated, you lose the sensation for thirst. When your blood sugar is the lowest, you actually don't feel like eating. You're about to have a heat stroke. You actually get cold to the touch and you stop sweating. So sometimes we got to understand our body. So first thing I do in the morning is I hydrate. I use hydrogen water. Alkaline water is, will not really alkalize the body. It doesn't have enough hydrogen to donate. Okay. So I do two things, filter underneath it here. I was going to oh. say, you're not doing tap water. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing will destructure the water. It'll get all the microplastics, fluoride, chlorine, even all, all the pharmaceutical elements. It'll completely destructure the water. And then this will hydrogenate it before it comes back out of that tap. It'll make it hydrogen water. And is this a part of the superhuman protocol? Yeah, this is a part of the superhuman protocol. Dude, water is the most so, important So thing. I do care about my water. I use spring water. Have you heard of Mountain Sp Valley Springs? Mountain Valley Springs is great. Okay. Um, I alternate spring water and oxygen water throughout the day. There's a water called Cocoon. It's okay. K-A-Q-U-N. Yep. Um, I'm actually working on um, getting this bottled in glass bottles instead of in plastic. Mm, I was just going to say. Yeah, not. it's the only way it comes. But this is yeah. the only truly oxygenated water in the world. It's wow. saturated with oxygen. Okay. So I'll drink a liter and a half of this throughout the day, and I'll drink about two or three liters of this throughout the day. Okay. And what, what is this stick thing right here? What is so that this, this is called an analema. Uh -huh. So what this will do, inside this stick, is something called mother water. It takes a nice. year to make this. I travel with this, this so this thing doesn't break. Okay. So you can either use it to stir a glass of water for about 30 seconds, okay. or you can stir this entire pitcher. And what it'll do in about 30 seconds, is it will restructure the water. Remember, water doesn't just have chemical properties, it's got physical properties. Yeah. If you've ever seen any of the research on praying over water or actually speaking to water or playing music to water, yeah. we now know beyond a shadow of a doubt that water will organize into these beautiful like hexagonal structures. It's not only more hydrating, it actually changes the charge and makes, makes the water more viable. So this will restructure and make the water what we call coherent. 30 I feel like seconds. I'm about to get some superpowers. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is this is a game changer it's called an analema. You read the research on an analema, it'll blow your mind. Taking hydrogen water, restructuring it, right on down the hatch it goes. I literally can feel the difference. You can taste the difference, man. So smooth and right? Like... It's truly different 
water. I notice when I travel and don't have access to hydrogenated water, I always take an analema with me. Okay. How much did one of those cost? For These the are about 180 bucks oh. and they'll, they'll last forever. And that water always stays in there. It's it contained. always stays in there. It's called mother water. Mother like I said, water. it takes takes a year to make this water. And then every once in a while, I'll lay this thing out in the sun and kind of recharge it for okay. about 10 minutes. I'll just lay it right out in bright sunlight. Use it to stir this or use it to stir up a, a glass of water if I'm, when I'm traveling. You're taking vitamins, but you're not taking Taking the typical doctor prescription things. No. Are, yeah. So, so talk a little bit about some of the things you're taking. So, on a so daily basically, basis. every one of these has got a different purpose. I don't. I'm not a big believer in supplementing just for the sake of supplementing. Yeah. So I supplement for deficiency. I did something called a methylation test, which is where I look at my DNA yep. and I see exactly what my body can convert and what it can't. So for example, if you can't convert folic acid and its derivatives into the form the body uses, like methylfolate, yep. then you supplement with methylfolate. There's four forms of B12 available in the world. A lot of us have problems processing certain forms of B12. As soon as you take this test, you'll know exactly what one to take. I take a multivitamin that I actually formulated myself. It took me about two and a half years to come up with that. I take BPC-157, take extra magnesium, extra zinc, DIM, because I'm on um, hormone therapy. So I, I do testosterone injections. And rather than take something called anastrozole, which is an aromatase inhibitor, keeps your estrogen down, but it's a little tough on the liver, which is from cruciferous vegetables, and it just keeps my estrogen in check. And then I'll throw these down the hatch when I get back after I get a little food in me. And we're gonna go down and do something I call four corners this morning. Okay. So um, so my lift day is today. So I, I, I lift heavy three days a week. Okay. Um, so I'm lifting tonight with my son after he gets out of nursing school. So in the mornings, I do something called four corners. So we just go down to the park yep. and um, and I walk for about 35 minutes. Okay. And at each corner of the park, I just do something different. Deep squats, um, some plank holds. We'll do some sunrises, like some push ups, some knee ups, just to get the blood flowing, yeah. get outside. I would actually take my shoes off and contact the surface of the earth. I'm a little scared of uh, what might be in the grass over there. So. Because we're out of the magnetic field of the Earth yeah. at about 55 feet, uh -huh. we're going to jump on a PMF mat when we get back. And we're going to okay. run through the superhuman protocol. So first we'll alkalize all 32 trillion cells in the body. Mm -hmm. Then we'll hyperoxygenate our cells with something called a hypermax. And then we're going to jump in a red light therapy bed. Yeah. All right, so let's get to the breath work. So this is the one thing I never, ever, ever miss. You guys don't do anything else in your day. Do not miss this eight minutes. Okay, this this will actually get the cerebrospinal fluid flowing from the, from the top of your skull all the way down to your sacrum. So what we do is just pigeon toe your feet in like this. And then we're going to take our, our thumbs, point them out, put our shoulders up like this. Rotate your thumbs back, pull your shoulder back, it should hurt. And then we're gonna rotate 40 times backwards. Two, one, just take them down. And then what we're gonna do is put our fingers together like this. Remember, pigeon toe your toes in, push them together, press them down, and then take it all the way up over your head, press it to the sky, stare at your middle knuckle for 10, and spring it down. Awesome. Now let's take our shirts off so we can get some of that sun. So Gary, how old are you, man? You look um, like you're freaking 30. You're pretty diesel yourself, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm um, 53. 53. I feel 23, but I'm 53. You for sure are. Have you yeah. looked into like your actual uh, age so you can do those tests? When yeah, I've got, it, I've got it back about eight years right now. So uh, tell them you're lengthwise, I'm eight years younger than. Okay. So biologically i'm eight years younger than my chronological age let's go and i'm working on getting it back 20 years let's get it <laughs> maybe you'll catch up with me so we'll just face the sun you obviously can't look right at the sun on and then we're going to do three rounds at 30 breaths okay. the idea here is to be obnoxious with our breathing don't worry about breathing through your nose or through your mouth just get the air in that's okay. the most important thing and we're going to do at the end of our 30th breath we're going to exhale we're going to hold as long as we can then we're going to inhale, hold as long as we can, and then we're going to let that air out and start again. Yep. And we'll do three rounds of 30 breaths. Okay. Cool. I want you to think about taking a string and tying it to your belly button and pulling your belly button out. So the breath work looks like this. I really want to get down into the low, into the, the lobes of the lungs, stay out of the apex of the lungs. We, we, we spend about two thirds of our time breathing with the top of our lungs, right? I want to get air down into the bottom of our lungs. I'm going to use the diaphragm to massage our intestines. I mean, this is the best way to wake up. Okay. So we're going to do three rounds of 30 breaths. Okay, you ready? Yep.
just gonna hold. And what I want you to do is try to get outside of your head. Find like a bird in a tree, car going by on the causeway. See if you can hear that boat deep breath in. Now, when people are starting, it's a good idea to start with just five breaths. Work your way up to 10. If you're not used to doing breath work, you get really, really lightheaded. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a good sign. Yeah. You're changing the oxygen tension in your tissues. You get all those gases out from overnight and put the fresh oxygen in. Presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. Nothing's more true than that state. All right, so we're gonna go round two. <clears throat> you ready? Let's go. <laughs> feel dude, good. this is the best part this of the day, it. dude. How yeah. good do you feel right now? I, as a I want everybody to feel like this. I call this my drug of choice. It really is. My body craves it every day. Yeah. When you're traveling, you can actually reset. You can reset your circadian rhythm doing yep. this. You know, I have two rules when, when I travel, especially when you change time zones. Number one, and nobody ever talks about this, you never want to eat during your normal sleeping window. Right, so if you go to bed at midnight and get up at 6 a.m., I'll just make that up for a second. You go to bed at midnight, you get up at 6 a.m. Now you go to London, let's say, so you're six hours ahead. Yeah. If you slide your sleeping window up at 6 a.m. to noon, you don't want to eat solid food between 6 a.m. and noon. You'll wreck your circadian rhythm. So if your body gets used to knowing that every morning within 15 minutes of me opening my eyes that I'm doing breath work, it resets itself to that circadian rhythm. So now if you're just changing time zones, you go from Miami to LA, you're breathing at, you know, first light in LA. If you're in Miami, you're breathing at first light in Miami. Yep. And when you travel, because you go to Dubai all the time, you're always mm -hmm. traveling. When you do these long flights overseas and in your time zones, you basically just fast that entire time. I fast the entire time unless the flight's more than 10 hours. Okay. Say on an under 10 hour flight, you'll fast, you'll get there, you'll probably either hit a workout or just go to bed. And then right when you wake up, now you're in a new light. Yep. You're hitting your breath work at first light and then you are then you can eat. That's it. And you're regulated. Your yep. circadian rhythm is just completely insane. Sick. Circadian rhythm is regulated. Yeah, your body will get tired. Your body craves routine. Yeah. I mean, our bodies, we're, we're creatures of habit, we're creatures of routine. So if you do the same thing every day, this is one of those things you can control. And if possible, you wanna get outside. So if you're staying in a hotel, get out on the balcony, walk outside, and then disregard the temperature. You know, aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort. And so a lot of times we don't want to go outside, it's too hot. We don't want to go outside, it's too cold. Yeah, you tell the grandma, right. oh, sit down, just, just relax. relax. Yeah, eat at the first pang of hunger. Yeah. It's just collapsing all of our natural defense mechanisms, right? <laughs> this is my uh, infrared oh my sauna. So this is uh, infrared, near infrared, and light sauna. So when I turn this on, all right, you'll feel this. This is a new one. I haven't seen this before. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a massage unit in it. So I just retrofitted it with these. Oh, I'm a little crazy. So it'll heat you up. Yeah. One of the things I like about it, it actually blows cool air on your head. Remember, it's not really good to bake your brain. It's not good to freeze your brain. I see okay. these guys sometimes on uh, Instagram. Doing the straws underwater yeah, in the cold straws ones. in 37 degrees. Not Remember, good. your brain is this far inside the surface of your skull. Yeah. Right? To pay the heat and cool the body, I'll do it. Head dunk, you know, at the end. Okay. Um, But I don't like to stay submerged underwater in cold water for long periods of time. And I don't like to stay in super hot saunas for prolonged periods of time. I'll go 30 minutes in this thing, heat my body up, get it really hot, sweat like crazy in this Oh, thing. this is actually a sauna? Mm-hmm. It's hot. Oh, it'll get hot. Oh, like shit. devil in there. So Whoa. this one's different than the red light chamber. Oh, yeah. Okay. Red light I is, If I only had one piece of equipment, I'd probably just have a uh, red light or the PEMF mat. How do you feel about a more affordable version like the Mito red light panels? That's yeah, the got those in there too. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay, I'll show cool. those to you. Cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fraction of the cost. Of yeah, because like we got to get into the cost for the people because I'm sure well, everyone's going to want to do this stuff. Yeah, so. let's, let's also not forget that what we did this morning was it's free. Really red light. Yeah, it's free. So yeah. I always like to say, what can you do for free? Right. Yeah. If you if you don't want to spring for a PEMF mat, take your shoes off. Contact the surface of the earth. Sure. Right. Um, if you want to make convenient, you buy a PEMF mat. Yeah. But, but touching the surface of the earth, it costs you nothing. So PMF is the same as ground up is. PMF is the same as grounding. Wow. I think in grounding. Okay. Same thing. Perfect. And then if you if you don't want to get a hypermax oxygen system, do the breath work that we just did. And then if you don't want to get a red light bed, get your shirt off and expose your skin to direct sunlight. This is our cold plunge, partnered with a company called Edge Theory Labs. Basically, this motor it has an ozone filter in it. 
So it uses ozone gas to filter this water. That water is six months old, but this water is crystal clear. I don't put chemicals in it. I don't put, you know, chlorines or bromides or anything like that. I keep it 48 to 50 degrees and I do three minutes minimum, six minutes maximum. There's not a lot of evidence that colder is better. Um, and then at the very end, we'll just dunk our head and pop out. So we're gonna do three minutes. So before I get in, I do a quick breath work routine. I do four like really steep inhales like this. Whoa. And on that last one, I'll breathe all the way in. Man, I'm right down in here and I'll sit here for three minutes. As you know, when I got in here, the first thing that happened was I had a peripheral vasospasm, right? So, so the arteries are all of my peripheral, my legs, my feet, my thighs, my, my forearms, you know, my, my biceps, they all clamped down to try to pull that blood into my core and basically save my life. So it's pulling the blood into the core and pushing it up to your brain. So right now, all that clamped down blood is going right to my liver, my lungs, my pancreas, my kidneys, and right up to my brain. Wow. And then the second thing that it does is it activates something called brown fat. Brown fat is your thermostat, right? It helps increase your body temperature, right? So when I get in here and the body panics, as soon as I get out, I've got to warm back up. So as my body's warming back up, it's warming up by utilizing something called brown fat. The other thing it's doing is my liver right now is releasing something called a cold shock protein. These are reserve proteins. They're found in your liver. Your liver will dump them into the bloodstream when you go in cold water. And when they hit the bloodstream, they scour the blood of free radical oxidation and they quadruple the rate of protein synthesis, which is muscle repair. We used to think that putting athletes in cold water after exercise was beneficial. We now know that doing it before exercise is the way to do it, right? That's correct. Because if you think of what the body's doing naturally, right? If you do a big squat workout, yeah. what does your body do? As soon as you're done tearing all that muscle, it's going to send more blood flow to that muscle, more proteins, more oxygen, right? Yeah. It's going to get all the byproducts, the creatinine out of the muscle. The last thing you want to do is shut that down. Yeah. Right? You don't want to strip all that oxygen and all those no. amino acids out of the muscle. So like right now, for example, I can't feel the water anymore. Right? Yeah. Gone now. No. No. <laughs> so now you could theoretically stay in here a lot longer. Sure. Right? So we're going to go to about the three minute mark. Now I'm going to dunk and get out. Cold shock proteins, peripheral vasospasm, get the blood to the core, the blood to the brain, activate that, um, that brown fat. Dude, you cannot be in a bad mood getting out of cold. Talk pills. about that real quick. Because I've heard that your dopamine levels actually increase by 250% throughout the day after this. That's right. Wow. So, and dopamine is the main driver of behavior. <clears throat> Serotonin is the main driver of mood. So they're endorphins, right? So if you want to get natural endorphins, then you get yourself in cold water. You skyrocket the level of dopamine, right? You'll have no cravings, nicotine, alcohol, no other kind of cravings, because when we create things like alcohol or nicotine or other kinds of, uh, um, you know, promiscuous behavior, all of these things that actually lead to addictive tendencies, this is a deficiency in dopamine. We're actually searching for dopamine. You know, most addicts are not actually waking up in the morning going, I want to get really banged up. They're waking up in the morning going, I want to feel normal. Wow. It's a dopamine deficiency. Yeah. So you can get a natural flood of dopamine just by getting. So cold. you like front run your dopamine yeah. and then you're good for the rest of the day. You're good for the rest of the day, dude. I, no, no matter what happens to you today, it's just going to roll right off your back. I love it. Everything's easier after this shit. Yeah. I'm gonna to dump to get what's called a pineal gland. Okay. So I'm just gonna hold my nose and go under. That is amazing, man. <laughs> Let's I'm go. You, what, you cannot be in a bad mood getting out of here. You look pumped Woo! up. 50 degrees, three minutes minimum, six minutes maximum. I like to do that. It's not such a shock, especially for people that might have heart condition, you know, it'll be a little bit more fragile. Remember, once you get that vasospasm, colder is not gonna make it spasm any tighter. Once it's clamped down, it doesn't clamp any tighter the colder the water down. There's not a real benefit to going colder, and except for the time frame, you, you save a little bit of time. <laughs> How amazing is that? <laughs> I wanna ask, what's the best way people can shed fat and build muscle? So, you know, steady state fasted cardio is, there's something called 30-30-30 that- um, You taught me that. Yeah, that, uh, you know, Tim Ferriss wrote a whole book on this. That, yeah. Um, one of my favorite authors. It's 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking, followed by 30 minutes of steady state cardio exercise. So that'll strip fat off your body. My preferred way is to actually do fasted steady state cardio, mm -hmm. but I take amino acids beforehand. Okay. So the only thing, there's a blend of perfect aminos um, by Dr. Minkoff that I'll take in the morning. 
morning. On my weight days, I make sure that I'm fed whenever I'm lifting heavy. Okay, so you yeah. don't like lifting fasted. Is no. Any, don't is lift. there any benefits to doing that or in your opinion? There's laws to the way that the body burns energy. Like there's physical laws to how the body burns energy and there's no exception to these rules. Yeah. Right. The first one is if you have glucose in the bloodstream, your body will burn glucose first. Yeah. When you're out of glucose, you 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 go to your backup reserve of energy, which is called glycogen. You have about a 20 minute reserve of glycogen. So if you're exercising intensely in a fasted state, yep. you've got no glucose, you got 20 minutes of glycogen. After your glycogen is, is gone, now the question is, we'd love to think that the body goes right to burning fat, but that's not true. It takes five to six hours to mobilize and metabolize fat. Wow. It takes three minutes to mobilize lean muscle tissue. So where do you think if you're exercising intensely in a fasted state, where do you think you're getting energy? You're burning your own lean muscle. If you look at triathletes, yep. sometimes they'll look skinny fat, right? They'll yeah. be really lean and squishy because they spend a lot of time getting energy from their own muscle tissue. Most people, when they say, I want to lose weight, what they're really saying is, I want to lose fat. So if you want to lose fat, you have to exercise to lose fat. If you're fasted, you want to take amino acids, full spectrum amino acids before you work out so that you're not burning lean muscle. So I wanted to ask, how did you get started on this journey? Because I know that you used to work in a different kind of industry where you were actually doing kind of the exact opposite. Yeah. You were I, predicting people's deaths. It's, it's interesting. All the good anti-aging research, all the good longevity research is coming full circle. It's coming back to the basics. Yeah. Like the further we just get away from the basics, sunlight, earth, oxygen, the further we get away from those basics, vitamin D3, then the less healthy we become. And yeah. then we start searching for health in like cans and bottles and pills and and, and chemicals and synthetics and pharmaceuticals. And that's not ever where you're gonna find optimal health. No. God gave us everything that we need to thrive. Contacting the surface of the earth, first light in the morning, breath work, those are your basics. Yep. Those are your just your go-tos. Human beings, we respond very well to light. We also respond very well to discharging into the earth or using a PMF mat. For 22 years, I was a mortality researcher for the insurance industry. We were charged with predicting death to the month. People are not dying because they're missing some rare Amazon root, you know, or some special supplement. People are dying early because they've gotten so disconnected from Mother Nature. They've gotten so disconnected from the basics. Sedentary lifestyle is the leading cause of all cause mortality. Aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort. You gotta stop telling grandma not to go outside, it's too hot, not yeah. to go outside, it's too cold. When I do this four corners exercise in the morning, yeah. if it's raining, I'm out here. Yeah. If it's hot, I'm out here. If it's cold, I'm out here. I just deal with it. So right here, we're just gonna do some easy squats. And now this is something you do before you work out. Yep, this is something I try to do every single day. Okay. Wake up, breath work, sunlight, cold plunge, hit the four corners, and then I hit superhuman. You're not trying to crush your body, you're just trying to move. Get the blood flowing, get some natural sunlight. Mobility is the key to longevity along with muscle. Yeah. We're starting to understand now that as we age, there's something called sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle wasting. So at some point, usually in our 50s, we start to lose more muscle every year than we gain. So we wanna fight sarcopenia. We wanna fight age-related muscle wasting. And the way to do that is one, move, and two, to lift heavy weight. So I wanna ask you a question about cholesterol because I just got my blood tests done and I had high cholesterol, but I had very low triglycerides glycerides, I believe yeah. it's called. Yeah, blood My fat. dad also got the same thing done and we're both on the carnivore diet. My okay. dad just lost 25 pounds. I'm He's lifting fan. four or five days a week, walking 45 minutes a day. Best shape of his life. He's 57. Yep. He feels like he's 47. Why is the doctor telling him now that he needs a statin, oh. that he is about to have a heart attack and drop dead any second? Cholesterol is probably the most maligned and misunderstood compound in the entire human body. Wow. So first of all, if we talk about what cholesterol is and what it's not, yep. cholesterol is not a fuel source. So the body can't use cholesterol for energy. Okay. So then what is it? It's a construction material. Yeah. We use it to build every cell wall. We use it to build every cell membrane. Um, we use it to build every hormone in the human body. We actually use it to make something called vitamin D3, cholecalciferol. Mm. That is the most important nutrient in the human body, yep. bar none. If you said, what is the single most important nutrient in the human body? By far, vitamin D3. Wow. So vitamin D3 is the only vitamin that a human being can make on our own. Yep. There's hundreds of vitamins in your bloodstream right now. You're only capable of making one. 
So think about how important that must be yeah. to, to our optimal health. It's the only vitamin human beings make. Yeah. So we make that from cholesterol. So the second thing about cholesterol is it's not really the amount of LDL cholesterol in your blood that matters. What matters is the size of that molecule, mm. right? So the smaller cholesterol gets, the more dangerous it becomes. Okay. The larger it gets, the healthier and less dangerous it becomes. Got it. So what determines the size? Triglyceride. Okay. Right? So as your blood fat goes up, your cholesterol gets smaller and more dangerous. Mm. As your blood fat goes down, cholesterol gets larger, and less dangerous. Wow. So it's actually very beneficial. In fact, if you look at the statin studies, yeah. you'll find that if you just focus narrowly on cardiovascular disease, you're, you're missing the point. Yeah. Because when you take statin, you increase all-cause mortality. So when people took heavy statin therapy, we would shorten their lifespan. So the thing that's supposed to be the cure is actually the thing that's killing yeah. them. I mean, think about this. You know, there's there are fatty acids. If something is necessary for life, we call it essential. There are three fatty acids that are essential. If you don't get these three fatty acids, you'll die. There are nine essential amino acids. If you don't get these nine amino acids, you'll die. There is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Just marinate on so that. You don't for a need carbohydrates. You do not need carbohydrates to live. Feeling good? Yeah, Woo! great, man. Dementia, Alzheimer's. I yeah. think there's a few myths that we need to talk about there, about Alzheimer's and dementia. Well, we know Alzheimer's now is something called type three diabetes. It's insulin resistance in the brain. Okay. See, the big myth, the big lie about Alzheimer's is that people are losing their memory. Yeah. That's not actually true. They're losing access to their memory. There's a difference between your memory in the early stages actually fading and your access to the memory fading. So access can be restored. In 22 years mortality research, I did not see a single centenarian that did not have elevated levels of LDL cholesterol. I also did not see a single early onset Alzheimer's patient that had not had 10 years of elevated blood sugar prior to. Wow. Sugar is the root of all evil. I used to be pre-diabetic. When I was getting fed uh, Lucky Charms and Cinnamon Toast Crunch with whole milk, I was yeah. eating that for 12 years. I was pre-diabetic hypoglycemia i was going down the wrong path but then it all changed when i learned that i could just eat eggs and i could actually eat bacon without getting a heart attack and yep. dying. yeah when i get back i'll have i'll have three eggs half an avocado a little small fistful of berries and then sometimes i'll either take some arugula and olive oil i eat a lot of grass-fed beef i eat a lot of line caught salmon i eat a lot of free-range pasture-raised eggs i mean these things are great for you yeah okay why does the medical system teach us that red meat is bad and that uh butter is bad these things are essential yeah for our health think about what you get from beef i mean the contents of beef are just that beef and just because something's not meat does not mean it's good for you essential fatty acids the essential amino acids that's where you always have to start so eggs the whole egg the cholesterol the center of the egg everything we only get 15 percent of the cholesterol in our diet from food 85 percent of the cholesterol in your bloodstream is made by the liver if we want to actually lower our cholesterol then we have to lower what goes in the front door of the liver put healthy fats and healthy proteins in Constantly. And why is it that the food pyramid seems to be completely backwards? Is, is that going to change? Well, if you think about it, I mean, the two largest tobacco companies own the four largest food manufacturers. We're eating a lot of dyes, pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, huge amounts of refined sugars, grains. I don't eat any grains at all. You know what's interesting, man, is a few years ago when I made this shift to, to leave that industry where I was predicting death yeah. and, and, and start helping people live healthier, happier your longer lives. I really stopped focusing on the money. I started mm. focusing on people's well-being. Yep. I didn't become wealthy until I became authentic and started focusing on people's well-being. Wow. Not on being wealthy. So you focused on your passion, went all in on it, and then the money kind of just came with it. I think you chase a passion, a purpose, or a calling. I don't think that you chase um, a company or a person um, or an idea. I think that you got to find that thing inside of you that you would otherwise do for free yeah. and figure out how to monetize it. Man, well, you've definitely done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Gary, I want to ask, who are some of these people that you're coaching? Are you able to tell us a little bit about your network? Who are some of the people that are investing in their health at the highest level? Well, I mean, some of the people that have been very public about their relationship with me, Dana yeah. White, P. Diddy, some of these guys, they're up on my, my Instagram page, Steve Aoki. A lot of these guys that when you look at them from the outside in, you would say, man, I mean, how do they have time to even take care of their health? You know, sure. they're so busy, they're traveling all over the world. You know, when I first met Dana White, for example, he was obese, he was pre-diabetic. He had one of the highest triglyceride levels I'd ever seen. Oh my God. He was insulin resistant. So was, if you were gonna predict his death, how, how close was he? To he that was he was 10 uh 10.4 years and and i hadn't i've only See done dana white. yeah i've only done dana knows that i've only done one life expectancy since i left that industry because yeah. when i decided to leave that industry said i'm never turning back i'm not going to spend one more day of my life predicting people's death yeah. i'm going to spend the balance of my lifetime helping people live healthy Bro, happy yeah long lives and everything that we're doing this morning i love this because we haven't spent a dime other than on the cold plunge and if you if you don't want to spring for a cold plunge start taking cold showers yeah or right? if they live somewhere like michigan where it's actually cold all the time they can go jump in a lake right? exactly they can go jump in a lake they can just go outside and expose their body to really cold air but everybody can take a cold shower yeah Right, so the breath work, the sunlight, the cold showers, contacting the earth, that will cost you nothing. Yeah. And then your food choices, stay away from the grains and all the refined sugars and cereals and crackers, white flour, um, and white goods. bread, anything that comes in a package. Yep. You know, people say, well, what kind of diet should I be on? And I, you know, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of the carnivore diet, huge fan of the carnivore diet. Been I'm on a, it for over a year now. Have you? Yes. You probably feel I amazing. Love it. I, your blood works perfect. Yep. So, but it's, I don't think everybody needs to be on a carnivore diet. I don't think everybody should be a vegan or a vegetarian. I don't think everybody needs to do keto. Yep. What I think you need to do is focus on whole foods. Get as close to the soil as possible. The further we get from the soil, the worse the food gets. Mm. See, the problem is not actually the food. It's what happens between where the food is, is harvested and how it makes it to the table, yep. right? So. I mean, the worst thing that ever happened to human beings was the agricultural revolution. Like I watched the movie Food Inc. You ever seen that yeah. one? Yeah. Okay, so they said that they have such an overproduction of corn because it's so cheap. So they're like, what are we doing with all this corn? Let's start making you know, all these foods. So yeah. they made our corn syrups. They make all different kinds of foods with corns. And most of the packaged goods we see in the grocery stores, like Doritos, uh, protein bars, all that stuff is just shit. Oh, it's absolute junk. It's yeah. not even food. Our yeah. body doesn't even realize it. Yeah. So what happens when you put things into the body that it doesn't recognize? Yeah. It calls the immune system. And when the immune system gets on site, a fight starts. Yeah. And that fight, the result of that fight is inflammation. Yeah. So like vaping and, and all of these things, that these chemicals that we put into our body, right? You vape, all that gets into your lungs, your, your, your body calls the immune system. Now you have inflammation in your lungs. Yeah. You know, you start eating seed oils and, and... Let's talk about that real quick. What are seed oils and how can people avoid them? So, so let me clear something up about seed oils because yeah. I, get, I get beat up online about this a lot of times. <laughs> people are like, well, seed oils aren't bad. You're right. The actual seed oil itself is not bad. Yep. It's industrial processed seed oils. Yep. Again, it's what we do to the seed oil. So if you took a canola oil and you sort of followed it through its life cycle, right? You take, you take the canola, you, they, they put it in this high pressure press. When it comes out, it's gummy. So now I have to degum it. What do they use? Hexane. Hexane's a neurotoxin. Yeah. So they use hexane to degum it. Now you have this degummed hexane laden oil and they take that oil and they heat it to 400 plus degrees. That turns the oil rancid. So now it smells and it's rancid. So how do they, how do they get the smell out of it? They deodorize it with sodium hydroxide. That's a massive carcinogen. So now you've taken it, you've deodorized it with sodium hydroxide, you've degummed it with hexane, you've heated it to make it rancid and then they bleach it to make it clear so it looks pretty on the shelf. They put Jeez. it in a plastic bottle and then they stick it on the shelf. And then they say it's heart healthy. And then they say it's heart healthy. It's so, okay. absolutely disgusting. What does that do once you consume that? Because if you consume it once or twice, it's not gonna be that end of the world. Right. But if you're consuming this every day for a decade in all of your different cooking oils and all your packaged goods, 
what starts to happen to our bodies? Massive amounts of inflammation. Yeah. Massive amounts of inflammation. And remember, inflammation you is, you know, we know inflammation because our nose gets stuffy or our lungs get clogged, yeah. but it's the inflammation that you don't feel, right? We like to think that the skin is the largest organ in the body. I don't think it's anywhere close to the largest organ in the body because the skin has a surface area of about half a tennis court, right? There's something in the body that has six times the surface area, six full tennis courts, and that's the lining of your blood vessels, the endothelial lining in your in your blood vessels. If you get inflammation in the lining of the blood vessel, you got 63,000 miles of blood vessel in your body. When you're putting pro-inflammatory foods like seed oils into your body, you're inflaming that lining, the lining in your gut, the lining in your blood vessels. So now nutrients can't leave and enter the tissue and the waste can't leave the tissue and enter the bloodstream. And this is where chronic disease begins. Okay. And then people get all kinds of, of ailments that they chalk up to the consequence of aging that are not a consequence of aging at all, wow. right? They're like, I'm supposed to have brain fog and weight gain and water yes. retention and poor sleep, yeah. right? I'm supposed to have poor short-term recall. No, you're not. No. You're supposed to thrive, Yes. right? And so the, we just accept these consequences of aging. They're consequences of long-term inflammation. Yeah, one of the easiest ways for me, guys, was <clears> just throwing out all packaged goods, eating tons of whole fruits, you can have vegetables if you like veggies, uh, nose to tail diet. We can talk about that oh, yeah. as well because there's certain kinds of meat that are not good either. Like the industrial complex, basically what they do is they, they take these cows and they basically give them a medicine that makes their, what is it, their, uh, their udders bigger yep. so they can produce more milk. And then from that, that creates pus. Yep. So then they have to solve the pus problem. So they give them an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. What does that do? That creates problems in our body as well. So are you a proponent of uh, getting your dairy from a farm, raw well, dairy? Yeah, that's such a great, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. I actually joined an Amish farm. Okay, so I'm me a member. Too. Oh, you me did? Too. I'm a member so, as well, yeah. Which one? Uh, my Healthy, Healthy Food Club. Yeah, my yeah. Healthy Food Club. That's mine too, bro. <laughs> so you get the, you get the A2, yeah, yes, milk. I get it all. Yeah, yeah, I, I get my right kefir, upstairs. I get my eggs, I get my milk from there. Yeah, yeah that's awesome, it's man, incredible. I love that. So um, so I joined that Amish, same Amish yeah. farm. And, uh, and look, we're in the middle of Miami. Yeah. So if we can do it in, in, in a city like this. They got a like farm just a couple hours away. They yep. deliver it cold to our doorstep. Yeah. Epic. Dude, I love it. Okay. So, uh, so I get butters, um, I get, you know, um, kefir, I get the, um, uh, I get the A2 um, milk, which is non-homogenized, non-pasteurized. So it's not heated. Yep. And I feel amazing. I don't get phlegmy, you know. Nope. And if you look at, at uh, my blood work, which I'm getting ready to post to Instagram. So, you know, I have the same blood fat as a vegan. And I, and I get about 70% of my caloric intake from fat. Wow. Right? So, um, you know, we have this real love-hate misunderstanding with with fats and red meats grass-fed grass-finished meats line-caught fish pasture-raised chickens pasture-raised free-range eggs those things are excellent for you because they're eating what they're supposed to be eating for hundreds of years they've been doing that but then we got the corn thing going start feeding them the corn yep. and that wrecks havoc inside them it's yeah. like consuming seed oils when we just eat them basically. yeah most cattle by the time they're slaughtered their their teeth have rotted not only rotted completely out of their mouth but they've rotted all the way up into the bone of the gum they can't even chew anymore they sort of suck oh and swallow God. their food because they'll take corn syrup and corn and excess grain and they'll just feed it to cattle as, as slop. Yeah. And then they're they're morbidly obese and they're diabetic by the time they're they're slaughtered. Oh and um, the diabetes gets so bad that the cow actually starts dying before it gets slaughtered. So what um, so th this is not good meat, no. right? Pump full of antibiotics and hormones. Um, so, you know, to kind of blow the blow the cow up. Yeah. We're not really what we eat or what we eat. Meats. Well, what our food eats. That's so you know true. I mean? So so if we go to ShopRite or Fry's, the number one thing, you know, at a, at a lower end grocery store would be buy grass fed, right? Buy grass fed. Pasture raised grass fed. Make sure you get on that because that's important. Dude, right. freaking amazing. Let's go. All right, one more lap. All right, so right now we're in the superhuman room and I've had this stuff for about a year, but I want Gary to break down exactly what each of these items do for us. And he's about to come in and show us the entire thing. Basically, all this is doing is taking everything that's good from mother nature yeah. from outside and bringing it in. Wow. So we, we start with something called a PEMF mat. Okay. This is pulse electromagnetic field. This is mimicking 
the grounding force of the earth. So laying on this mat will make you alkaline, uh -huh. right? It will alkalize all 32 trillion cells. So this is running a low Gauss current through the body, okay. right? A little bit stronger than the, the current of the surface of the earth. Yep. So when you run a low Gauss magnetic current through the body, you actually change the polarity of the cells, right? So out there, you'll see I've got a couple of uh, microscopes on my desk. Yeah. They're dark field microscopes. So basically, I can take a drop of your blood, put it on that microscope before you get on this mat, and you'll see that all your red blood cells are sort of clumped together and stuck up. When they, when they have the same charge, they can't touch. But when they get opposite charges, they attract. This is what happens when you get acidic, right? When your body gets borderline acidic. The pH range of the blood is only about four tenths of a point. It's not much, five tenths of a point. If I get more acidic, my red blood cells start to stick together and clump up and travel around the bloodstream in packs. If I can separate them, which I can do with a PMF mat, yep. I get all that surface area to exchange nutrients with the bloodstream and that's what you want. So if you can't contact the surface of the earth very often, then you can get a PMF mat, put it right on top of the mattress, put the mattress pad and the sheet over top of it, Run this thing when you go to bed at night. Every morning that you wake up, you'll be alkaline. So you have one of these on your mattress as well? Yeah, I just put it right in my mattress. Okay, and then do you just press it on for what, 30 minutes and that's all you need when yep, you go to bed? Yeah, I put it on for 30 minutes and I go to right to sleep on it. You don't even wow. know it's running. And do you change the setting to like uh, the lower one when you go to sleep? Tranquility. Tranquility, okay, yeah. cool. And it puts you right into a deep sleep. And how much do one of these cost? For the people watching, they probably wanna buy one now. Is there, cause I know there's a lot of different ones out there. Yeah. Some of them are probably not that good. I I test them all. Now yeah. I send them to a third party lab. I have dirty wow. frequency tested. I have an EMF tested. A lot of them will actually pull bad EMFs right into your body. Oh my God. Right? So you want to actually this magnetic field to push Wi-Fi, microwave, radio wave, 5G. You want it pushing that out of the body. You don't uh -huh. want it to pull it in. This one's by Pure Wave. I mean, I tested every mat out there. I'm not saying there's not, not other good mats out there. There, sure. there, there are. Pure Wave was the one that scored the highest on all the tests that I did. Remember, human beings are not really powered by the food that we eat, um, the air that we breathe. We're really powered by one energy source called ATP. And it's made in something called the mitochondria. 10% of your body weight is mitochondria. You've got 110 trillion of these little batteries inside every cell in your body. Right, you got 110 trillion of them in the body. And what they do is they produce something called ATP. And this is really what powers us, right? Wow. So aging is a progressive mitochondrial decline. It's a decline in mitochondrial function. So red light will take oxygen and hammer it into the mitochondria and kick out a gas called mitochondrial nitric oxide. If I can get oxygen into this little organelle in the cell, I can give it 16 times more power. Presence of oxygen is the absence of disease, but when oxygen goes into the cycle in the, in the mitochondria called the Krebs cycle, you get 16 times more energy than if you don't have oxygen. Okay, and we're gonna open our yep. body up Yep. with the cardiovascular activity. So that's now moving the red blood cells around. Plus we're opening ourselves up to receive the yep. oxygen. So basically what's happening is the air that you breathe right now, the air yep. we're breathing right now is 21% oxygen. So okay. this is one of the only EMF free um, treadmills. Mm. Treadmills spit out a lot so of much EMF. dirty EMF because yeah. they have those, they have these spools in them that the electricity goes into and it just spews EMF. So guys, if you like your treadmills at the gym, I know a lot of you gym rats out there yeah. like them, go outside for a walk, man. Yeah, amen to that. Or this. So, yeah, this one's great. This, yeah. is, uh, this is an Assault Runner Elite. I'm gonna okay. take this oxygen mask, I'm gonna put this on you, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the 21% ambient air that you're breathing, yep. and you're gonna breathe 95% O2. Okay. This is called multi-step oxygen therapy or EWOT, exercise with oxygen therapy. You do it for about 10 minutes, just hold that. So you're gonna walk for three minutes, and then you're gonna do a light jog for 30 seconds. Then you're gonna walk for three minutes, light jog for 30 seconds. We do three rounds of that, flood the bloodstream with oxygen. And once we get all that oxygen into the bloodstream, we're gonna to move to a red light therapy bed, and we're gonna pound that oxygen right into the mitochondria. And that's just science. The partial pressure, the amount of oxygen in the bloodstream is skyrocketed. So the blood is flooded with oxygen. And now we're gonna get into a red light therapy bed. I'm gonna put you on simmer here. These lights that look like they're off, they're actually on. You just can't see them. They're infrared and near infrared wavelengths. So they're actually running. The only ones you can see are the red lights. So I put them in there. 
See ya. For 10 minutes. And uh, so that's gonna reduce inflammation. It's gonna increase collagen, elastin, fibrin in the skin. It's gonna open up the microvascular circulation in the eyes, the liver, the lungs, the pancreas, the kidneys, the brain. And then it's gonna drive oxygen right into the mitochondria. Gary, how much is something like this bad boy? This one will set you back about 119,000 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> or you do the free version and get natural sunlight in the morning. Expose your skin to natural sunlight. You do not have to drop 119 thousand dollars on a red light bed god gives it to you free every single day all right so now we're going to see what gary eats for breakfast every day and we're going to review my blood test so we can see exactly what's going on with my body what do we got gary all right so this is what we have going on eggs avocado blueberries typical go go to breakfast for me i mean the most important thing about eggs yep. is it's not actually that they're organic it's that you see these two words pasture raised if they're cage free that just means they're out of the cage and they could be eating a bunch of shit if they're organic it just means that uh um there's you know generally free of antibiotics and and hormones but when they're pasture raised that means they're out of the cage they're out in fields they're eating bugs worms grass all the things that chickens are meant to eat um these are these are pasture raised as well so these are organic and pasture raised little trick to actually washing your your fruit and you should always always wash your fruit even if it's organic just dump it in a little bit of water put a little a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of baking soda. Just massage the fruit in there, leave it in there for about a minute. If there are pesticides, herbicides, insecticides on there, it'll actually pull them right out of the fruit and it'll wash all the dirt, the little mites, and anything that's and anything that's on the fruit. And then I put it right back in the same container. See how it's got all these holes on yep. the side? So I'll just put it right back in this container. And then to just wash that vinegar and the baking soda off. Yeah, you got a little baking soda on there. I'll just take a little water wash it out like that. It takes an extra two seconds just to wash your produce. And that is a game changer for you. Couple of types of oil. I only think you need four oils in your life. Yep. You need a coconut oil, a grass fed or a ghee butter, an olive oil at room temperature. And then I also use something called tallow, beef tallow. So I'll take a little bit of tallow. I'll just put that in a pan. No nonstick pans. I use, either use pure aluminum or you can also use cast iron. That's what I yep. use. Believe it or not, cast iron pans will actually put iron in, into your body a little no bit. Of, way. Yeah, so it's actually none of the bad things. It's a lot of the good. <laughs> I throw a little tallow in there and then I'll take three eggs and I'll just crack them, pop them right in there and I'll mix them up after they're in the pan. So I'll scramble the eggs with a little bit of tallow and then I'll put those on a plate with half an avocado. This is what I'm eating every single day. I keep it light in the mornings and then I eat animal protein throughout the rest of the day. You know, grass-fed ribeyes in there, grass-fed ground beef. And then I also get the wild line caught salmon. I eat it usually an entire avocado in the morning and I'll actually put olive oil on the avocado crushed Celtic sea salt. So I used to use pink Himalayan sea salt and I started looking at some of the research on pink Himalayan sea salt. Yeah, a lot of the pink Himalayan will be uh, heavy metals in it. So the Celtic sea salt, probably my favorite is Baja Gold. This will have all of the essential minerals and nutrients in it. So I'll just scramble these up. Now typically how much protein should someone get per day if they're trying to be pretty lean, have good muscle mass? A gram per pound of body weight. Okay. That's a really good average. We, we are so protein deficient. Remember, muscle is our metabolic currency. Yeah. Muscle will determine your, your, your metabolic rate. It also moves lymphatic fluid around the body. We have a... We have a static system in the body to eliminate waste. It's yep. called your lymph system. You know, when you get your lymph nodes get swollen, when you yeah. get a sore throat. Yep. Um, but you've got lymph all throughout your legs, your arms, and your chest, and your, and your pecs. And, and the less muscle mass you have, the less that lymphatic fluid moves. Okay. So it not only holds your skeleton in place and makes you look good, but it's actually, it's, it's metabolic currency. It actually lowers your cholesterol, it lowers your triglyceride levels, it moves lymphatic fluid and gets poison out of the body. The truth is, if you wanna live a long time, lift heavy weight, three days a week. You yeah. can safely lift heavy weight. When I say heavy weight, I don't mean that you have to deadlift, bench, and back squat heavy amounts of weight. I mean that you need to challenge your body. You can do what's called farmer's carry. You can do goblet squats. It's just taking a 25 to 50 pound kettlebell, putting it up underneath of your chin and doing body weight squats while you're holding that weight. You wanna put muscles through the full range of motion while they're under stress. There is nothing that will extend your life better than, than having the right amount of muscle mass. And for those of you that, I mean, um, in every research article I've ever read um, that's ever been published, weight training beats cardiovascular exercise hands down. So if you only have 20 minutes and you have the choice of jumping on the treadmill or lifting weight, lift, lift weight. weight. Yeah, lift weight every time. 
take healthy pasture-raised eggs right there. Remember the whole egg, the, the yolk, everything. So I'll take a little olive oil, just spread it right on there. Do not be afraid of healthy fats. This is actually something that we should talk about because there's a lot of olive oils out there now that are actually mixed with seed oil, sunflower oil. Read so, the labels. So yeah. read the labels. This one says organic extra virgin olive oil. That's it. That's it. So this one checks out. Yep. So a little Celtic salt on there. I'll take a fistful of berries. Sometimes I'll eat a little bit of arugula. Berries are the only fruit that I allow myself. Strawberry, blackberry, blueberry, raspberry. They're lowest on the glycemic index. So that's not gonna spike your insulin levels as much? That's not gonna spike your insulin levels as much, okay. especially when you're eating it with fats and proteins. Black pepper? Yep, organic black pepper. That that's right it? there is a breakfast of champions. Let's go, man. Hell yeah. Okay, so let's say you have a hundred dollar budget to go grocery shopping because there's mm -hmm. people out here that you know they're watching us in this amazing big house. You know we have all this fancy technology. Right. You said earlier there's there's a lot of things we can do without even having a lot of money. As we saw, we got the sunlight. You can hop in a cold shower. You can hop in a lake. For food though, what are the most important ingredients that they should be shopping for? Let's say if they just had a hundred dollar budget. If you had a hundred dollar budget, I would go for the eggs, I would go for the avocados, and I would go for grass-fed ground beef. Grass-fed mm. ground beef is a lot less expensive than grass-fed steak. You know, this, the grass-fed steaks take a huge jump in price, but you get the same quality in ground beef that's grass-fed. The three places that I would spend money if you're on a really tight budget is I would spend money on grass-fed meats, I would spend money on organic fruits because non-organic fruits absorb pesticides through their skin. You know, a non-organic fruit is just fraught with pesticides. Remember everything that we did this morning, yeah. I wanna show you the free version and, and the paid version. You don't need to go spend 150 grand on equipment. You can wake up in the morning, you can do breath work at first light, you can contact the surface of the earth with, um, with bare feet and you can take a cold shower. Beautiful. Those three things alone, they'll cost you nothing. Everybody's showering every day. God gives us the sunrise every single morning for free, and you can learn to do three rounds of 30 breaths. That alone, if you just added those things to your routine, is a game changer for you. And guys, if you did this stuff every single day, imagine the clarity and the motivation you have to go out and actually make more money so that you can go buy these things You know, when you get to that level. So this is gonna help you out in every single aspect of your life. Well, remember, we'll never really be able to manage time, but we can manage our focus. Mm -hmm. Right, and the way that we manage our focus, we make our brain sharp. We feed our brain oxygen. We feed it clean, clean foods. And so, if you like that breakfast right there, is not an expensive breakfast. If you ate out, it would be. Yeah. Um, but it is not an expensive breakfast to, to make at home. I bet that's less than five dollars. So right now, we're gonna get an inside look at my blood work. I've been on the carnivore diet for over a year now. Something that Gary told me that is okay, that I can do, and I've been doing it. I've been absolutely thriving. But let's take a look under the hood and let's actually look into exactly what's going on with my blood. And he's gonna explain everything to us right now. Well, everything's going in the right direction, that's for sure. A couple things to point out here. Your red blood cell count is continuing to climb, which is a good sign. Remember, your red blood cells are what transport oxygen in your blood. Your immune system is perfectly oriented. We wanna see the ratio of these white blood cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils. They're all just fancy names for white blood cells. We wanna see these numbers decreasing just like this, 1.7, 1 1.6, 1 0 0.3, 0 0.2, down to zero. That V-shaped pattern's excellent. Dude, your blood sugar is low. I was fasted right <laughs> okay, here. good. I was fasted. Yeah, it's really low. Kidney function is off the charts. You have a high filtration rate in the kidney, and you have very low poison levels in the blood. To your liver functions off the charts. So all that drinking in college is is gone. It's gone. It didn't it's do gone, man. The liver made a made a nice rebound for Great you. Comeback. Your alkaline phosphatase, which is a measure of the liver poison in the yeah. blood, that should be filtered out. It's nice and low. It's seventy. You have no inflammation, no irritation in the liver. This is perfect. Um, Cholesterol, literally, I eat red meat every day. Literally perfect. Your healthy cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, yeah. high density lipoprotein is 62. It should be above 39. Perfect. Your triglycerides are some of the lowest I've seen. You don't want them to be over 149, 150. Yours are 56. And think about the amount of saturated fat you're eating and yet your blood fat is at 56. This is because your body is using fat as a fuel source. Mm. Like, like when you go into ketosis and you actually use something called beta-hydroxybutyrate, a, 
um, a ketone body, yeah. um, which is a fat, you're using fat as an energy source. If you added high carbohydrate and sugar to this, your blood work would take a nosedive. You have slightly elevated LDL cholesterol with low triglyceride, low blood fat, high healthy cholesterol, low lethal cholesterol, the VLDL, the very low density lipoprotein. This is a perfect setup. If I was doing your life expectancy right now, which I'm not, but if I was, I would extend your life expectancy based on that. We're living to 100. Testosterone's great, 744 for a male your age with free testosterone between 13 and 18. Perfect. Quick note on that. I was at a 350 when I first started with you. Yeah. You guys took my first blood test and then you put me on all of my natural medicines to yep. reverse engineer my uh, biochemistry to get it back to normal levels. Yeah, the, and now The vitamin D3, the yep. DHEA. Remember, your body needs raw materials to do its job. Yeah. If you're deficient in D3 and DHEA, you won't be able to make testosterone. So a lot of guys are low on testosterone, not because they can't produce it, but because their body doesn't have the raw material it needs to do its job. Yeah. One of the things that I like to focus on is what's missing from this person's body that we could put back so they could thrive, yeah. right? We often think of pathology or disease or something that's happening to us. It's actually happening within us, mm -hmm. right? So the body needs certain raw materials, resources to do its job. So this is, this is perfect. And I got to a thousand actually after that first time as well. I was at a 350 I remember to a that. thousand. I know, <laughs> you were a beast. Yeah. Yeah. Your cortisol levels are amazing. Um, remember, cortisol is not a measure of how much stress is in your life. It's a measure of your body's reaction to stress. Mm. So high levels of cortisol um, are a sign that you're not getting enough sleep, that you're overworking your adrenals. Eventually, that cortisol collapses. You get adrenal fatigue and your cortisol is floored out. So Yours is in an absolute great range. Your thyroid is strong. Your estrogen's in a good range. Look, not, the, not that you would think that you would have prostate problems at 26, but nice yeah. to know that you don't. Prostate sure. looks great. D3 is perfect at 74. Yes. Um, you want that between 60 and 80. That's a perfect range. Your thyroid's healthy. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take something called trimethylglycine to bring down this homocysteine. That's what he already told me about. Yeah, I'm yep. going to start taking that. Yep. That's the so, only thing. Now. Yep. The only thing you have is a little bit, a little bit of homocysteine. Does that have anything to do with uh, being on a carnivore diet? Not at all. No? It has to okay. do with a natural protein, an amino acid that's found in the blood. Uh -huh. Because of your genetics, yeah. you have impaired homocysteine metabolism. Okay. You take an amino acid called trimethylglycine and you'll metabolize that right down. I know this is true because your last homocysteine was, was 6.4. Because I was taking that medicine. Yep. yep. And now that, you now, that, yeah, now that you're off that amino acid, it climbed up again. You'll go right back on trimethylglycine. So look guys, if you wanna do this too, you can literally sign up for a blood test, do your cheek swab, see your gene test, and Gary and someone from his team will sit down and literally show you exactly what you need to take to make your levels normal. You can do this as well. It's amazing what happens to human beings when you give them the raw material their body needs to just do its job. I'm not a big believer in supplementing just for the sake of supplementing. I believe that we should supplement for deficiency. If you know what deficiencies you have, you know exactly how to target supplement. And the way you find out is you do a cheek swab once in your lifetime. You take a Q-tip, you swab the inside of your cheek, we send it to a genetics lab. It sends you back exactly what raw materials you can convert and what you can't. And then you supplement for those raw material deficiencies. These are things like specific forms of B12, um, the suite of B vitamins, pyridoxine, riboflavin, thiamine, niacin, panathenic acid, fancy names for B vitamins, vitamin D3, methylated folate. Everybody gets on my case and they're like, you can get everything you need from the diet. If you are eating perfectly clean, organic, grass-fed, free range, no, no packaged foods, then yes. But 99% of us cannot have access, especially traveling sure. to that kind of sure. consistent um, nutritious diet. So yes, I'm a big believer in supplementing for deficiency, not for the sake of supplementing. Targeted supplementation can be a game changer in your life, especially if you've got anxiety, depression, poor sleep because your mind keeps you awake. If you've got gut issues that you've thought were an allergy, but you can't seem to figure it out. This is related to the motility of the gut. Yep. And even young, hard charging, burning the candle at both end entrepreneurs, men and women, um, we think because we have youth on our side that we don't need anything else. The truth is you have no idea how good you could feel.
you think you feel great now, wait till you supplement for your deficiencies. Your baseline sense of normalcy goes into that optimal range. I'm telling you, you'll feel like you won the lottery. And how much does that cost just to get these the tests? Test, the, the one test that you do once in your lifetime is 600 bucks. It's a one-time genetic test. You'll never repeat it. And then supplements are gonna run you 60 to 80 bucks a month. Something Guys, like that. you gotta invest at least that 600 bucks one time and then you'll know forever. Once in your life and you'll never yeah. guess again on what you're deficient. This looks great, man. Insulin in the single digits. Your thyroid is strong. Brother, I'm, I'm proud go, of you, man. man. It looks great. All thanks to you, man. When looks I came great. here, it did not look like this a couple years ago. So yeah, and here's the, here's the final thing that I do. I actually, I use a lot of other supplements. Trust me, I don't just push my own supplement line. I'm a big believer in Perfect Aminos by Dr. Minkoff. There's a lot of great uh, supplement manufacturers out there. Thorn Pure Encapsulations. You don't have to get things through me particularly. This is a multivitamin I formulated myself. I'm really proud of it. it took me two and a half years wow. of flying around the country to actually source every single one of these raw materials. The interesting thing about this multi is that it doesn't just give you all of your macros, it gives you all the cofactors, the things you never hear about, molybdenum, selenium, boron, manganese, um, copper, all of those things that our body needs to thrive. I take those vitamins first thing in the morning. They're highly specific to me. And that concludes the morning routine. That concludes the morning routine. Oh, Thank you so much for everything. Amazing. This has been such a good day. Guys, please make sure you follow this man. He literally has changed so many lives, my life, and your life is next. Subscribe to this channel. You know, I follow Colin. I think that his advice is amazing. I mean, he's just one of those young, hard-charging entrepreneurs that puts it all out there. I like people that are very real, very authentic, very visceral. So even I follow this guy. I'm a fan <laughs> of yours too. Thank you. You're man. fully biohacked. I appreciate it. It's just biohacked and proof. Gary <laughs> proof. Thank you. Subscribe. Yeah.